Hey everybody. We've had quite a few people asking us what our favorite games are, or what our choices are for Game of the Year. We spent some time thinking about it, and decided that we didn't really want to do a top 10 list, because those are really a matter of personal taste, and half the time they're just used to rile up the fanboys anyway, so we decided to tackle the problem from a different angle. Instead, we're going to give a list of interesting games you might not have heard of or tried. This way, we can give some quality, under-the-radar games a little more attention, and give everyone a good time while we're at it. Here are some rules for how we're going to do this. 1. I'm not promising that all these games are good, I'm just saying they're interesting. Maybe they have a neat mechanic or some wacky story. All I can promise is that they're totally unlike the typical games you see roll off the shelves every week. Two, we're going to keep this limited to relatively recent games, because trying to examine the entire spectrum of gaming history just gets overwhelming really quickly. I can't give you an exact date for when recent starts, but if I had to give a time frame, probably somewhere in 2008-ish. Yeah. Three, if you see something we've missed, go post it in the comments. We don't have time to even include our entire list, so there are definitely a few deserving games that are going to be left out. Besides, you guys probably know some awesome ones we haven't even heard of, so go share the goods. Alright, let's get started. Let's kick off with some strategy games. We got a bunch of those. First up, Fate of the World. This is a turn-based strategy game about getting humanity to survive until 2200, and it's as compelling as any game about dominating the world. It's backed by some pretty good science, and when you sit back and contemplate what your in-game actions mean, you're certain to have some moving moments. Knights in the Nightmare. This may be the most bonkers game I've seen all year. It's a strategy shooter role-playing game. Think Final Fantasy Tactics meets Ikaruga. Makes as much sense as it sounds. Europa Universalis, Victoria 2, and Hearts of Iron. Hardcore historical strategy geeks, these are for you. If you've ever wanted to micromanage your economy down to the individual level, or wondered what an accurate map of Europe looked like in the second week of July 1485, you must play these games. Be warned though, these games are some of the hardest ever to learn. They do not do any hand-holding. Heck, they don't even give you any victory conditions. The goal is simply to see if you can change history in whatever way you find most interesting. Valkyria Chronicles. Mostly XCOM and a little bit of shooter, with some of the best cell shading I've ever seen. It's got a decent story, and shockingly gets the closest video games may have come to actually talking about concentration camps. The story's tone can get a little inconsistent sometimes, bouncing between light-hearted anime antics and horrors of war, but the game's well worth a look. Alright, enough strategy. Let's talk RPGs. The world ends with you. The best thing Square Enix has put out in the last three years. Period. With its anime pop psychology and surprisingly complex dual-screen fight system, this wacky handheld title stands out and proves the continuing vitality of the JRPG. Also, it needs to be said, awesome soundtrack. Kingsfield, The Ancient City, and Demon Souls. Now, I thought Demon Souls was really good, and I'd recommend it to anybody who likes a lot of challenge in a really lonely but really rich setting. But I'm actually going to use this as an excuse to shoehorn in a plug for an older game by the same team. If you like hard, action-esque RPGs, Kingsfield, The Ancient City was an incredible entry that everybody panned because it was so brutal. And yeah, it is brutal, but I find it fascinating because it's brutal but fair. If you actually pay attention to your surroundings, you can anticipate all of the game's traps and tricks. Something which, to date, I haven't seen another game do so well. So if you like first-person RPGs, dust off your PS2 for Kingsfield the Ancient City. And uh, pick up Demon's Souls 2 while you're at it. If nothing else, they prove that interesting difficulty can still sell. Radiant Historia. You like Chrono Trigger? Well, Radiant Historia isn't that good, but it comes a lot closer than I would have expected. One of the most interesting takes on time travel and choice I've seen in a handheld RPG. And it has a combat system that's far more interesting than your standard run forward, smack him in the face, get back in line formula. Desktop Dungeons. Exploration as a limited resource? Brilliant. Alright, moving on. In the action category, we have Super Crate Box, an action platformer that actually forces you to switch up your strategy. In the fighting category, we have Final Fantasy Dissidia. Now, I'll admit this one's a little tough to get into. We even dismissed it pretty quickly the first time we tried it, but once this game clicks, it can become an obsession. It couples simple, elegant controls with a unique fighting system as innovative as that found in Super Smash Bros., and all of that with a layer of RPG elements thrown in. This may be one of the deepest single-player rabbit holes we've ever stumbled upon. Now for the horror category. It's actually been a pretty lame year for horror, but Amnesia The Dark Descent is here to pick up the slack. 
it's not an apotheosis of the form or anything, but in a year like this, it stands out like a gem. They don't give you a weapon, and most of the time, they don't even show you the monster. And it works. In the adventure category, we have Ghost Trick. You enjoy Phoenix Wright, but wish that there was more actual gameplay involved? Ghost Trick is the game for you. Also, Professor Layton. This may be one of the best for all ages series out there. If you haven't heard of it before, think Miyazaki film interspersed with brain teasers. It may try a little too hard to justify having that many riddles, but really, if you like a range of puzzles and want a game that anyone can love, the Professor Layton series is the way to go. Now for the Flash game category. Most of these games will only take you five minutes to play, so go give them a whirl. Today I Die. The closest thing I've seen to an interactive poem. Which is good, because that's what it's trying to be. Every day the same dream. Can't seem to get rid of that pesky, cheerful mood. This is the game for you. Also check out One Chance, which is sort of similar. Company of Myself. This is what you would get if you crossed a puzzle platformer game with somebody's diary entry on loneliness. I don't even know what that means. End of Us. Friendship and attachment portrayed by asteroids. Sure, why not? Freedom Bridge. Oh, that was depressing. Passage. A representation of life in less than five minutes. Alright, now moving on from Flash games to the puzzle category. We have Might and Magic, Clash of Heroes. Basically, puzzle quest using puzzle drop mechanics. If only the game had a better challenge curve. Space Camp. What did I just play? Was it good? I don't know, but it was interesting. Ilo Milo. It, il, ilo Milo. I, whatever. Cute, creepy, weird, beautiful, and multiplayer. It's rare that you care about atmosphere in a puzzle game, but this one gets it just right. And finally, the MMO category. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening in the MMO world, but for today, we're just gonna say Dungeon Fighter. Streets of Rage, the MMO, set in a fantasy universe with all of your fighting game controls straight down to the cancels. Also, it's free. You're welcome. And an honorable mention goes to Minecraft, which has been disqualified because everyone's heard of it. For the two or three of you who haven't yet tried Minecraft, try Minecraft. You are missing out. And thus concludes our first collection of games you might not have tried but totally should. There's probably a thousand more that deserve mention- actually, I know there's a thousand more that deserve mentioning, but that's all we got time for now. This was fun though, I'm sure we'll do it again. Until then, share your own favorites in the comments section, and happy gaming. See you next week.